Hey everyone, today I wanted to show you guys how to rig a stage model. There are lots of different ways to do it, um, and there's lots of commercially available sling kits out there that you can buy to sling your stage models, but I'm going to show you a super cheap way to do it. It's going to cost less than 20 bucks just using a bunch of different materials um, that you can commonly find at your local marine store. So the tank I'm going to be using is an aluminum 40, so all the sizes and measurements I'm going to be talking about are going to be for that specific tank, but you can easily adapt that to fit any tank that you might be doing, an aluminum 80, an aluminum 19, anything like that. So there are a few things you're going to need before we start. The first thing is 5 feet of mildew resistant rope to form the sling, 2 4 inch bolt snaps, 3 feet of bungee cord, 1 5 inch stainless steel screw clamp, about 16 inches of 5 8 inch tubular webbing, and a short length of one inch tubular nylon webbing. You'll also need a standard screwdriver, something to cut with, and a lighter. I wanted to give you guys a bit of a background on the materials I'm using first. Uh, if you don't want to hear about that and you want to skip straight forward to the assembly part, feel free to do so right now. I use three millimeter polyester covered racing rope that's designed for sailing. I get this at my local marine store, Trotac Marine here in Victoria. It costs about 50 cents a foot, so it's super cheap and it's a really strong, durable rope. I buy all my bolt snaps from Dive Gear Express for about $5 US. Local shops and marine stores will sell bolt snaps for $10 or $15. Uh, so you can do that as well if you just want an easy way to go find them. But I do find that ordering through Dive Gear Express is a lot cheaper, especially if you have a number of items to buy. I've had these particular bolt snaps for two or three years now at least and they've held up really well, they're really durable, they're in good shape. So the ones from Dive Gear Express are a good quality bolt snap. You will see a few different types of bolt snaps out there. You'll want to avoid the gate clips at all costs. I don't even have one to show you guys, uh, unfortunately, but a lot of tech divers call these suicide clips, and the reason they do that is because they're prone to clipping onto things you don't want them to clip onto and cause an entanglement or an entrapment hazard. You may also see butterfly clips out there. I don't like using these on any of my tech diving gear, but I find they're good for my camera equipment because they clip on quickly and easily and make it getting in and out of the water with a big camera rig really easy. With some practice and skill development, anyone can use a regular bolt snap without any problem. So I recommend doing some practice with the bolt snaps instead of going and buying something that's potentially dangerous. The bungee cord I use also comes from my local marine store. I get it for about 30 cents a foot. Super cheap, so I usually just buy a whole big roll of it at one time. 5 8 tubular webbing is an option. You don't have to have it, but I do like to use it because it prevents corrosion between the dissimilar metals and the stainless steel and the aluminum on the, on the clamp. I buy this all off of eBay because I haven't been able to find anyone locally that stocks it or supplies it. The 1 inch tubular webbing is more important because it protects the worm gear of the screw clamp from getting caught on anything. So if you're diving inside of a rack or technical diving in a cave, anywhere there's lines or things that you could, you could get entangled in, you're going to want to protect the worm gear of the screw clamp. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to put a piece of one inch webbing around it. You can also use a piece of garden hose to protect the worm gear. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're assembling the stage bottle is tie the bolt snap into a granny knot at the one end of the rope. You're going to want to make it just loose enough so you can slide it over top of the valve hand wheel and onto the neck of the valve. This will help keep it nice and tight, keep the bolt snap close to the valve so that that tank isn't falling down and dragging along the bottom. You want to position the rope at about 5 o'clock on the valve. You'll want to make a measurement about 8 inches from the bottom of the tank where you can tie another knot in the line. Once you've made that mark, you can go ahead and tie another doubled up granny knot with about a four to five inch loop around the head. Don't worry about putting the bolt snap in just yet. We'll get to that later. Now before putting the screw clamp on, you'll want to put together the tubular webbing. I'm reusing this webbing, but if you have new webbing, be sure to cut it to length and make sure you burn the ends so they don't fray. Now you can slide the screw clamp over the tank with the worm gear in line with the valve. This will, keep, this will give it the most protection from catching on things, but also keep it from wearing on your gear. Now we can attach the bolt snap. Put the loop through the eyelet of the snap, and then push the top of the snap through the loop again. This will keep the snap detachable in case you ever want to use it for something else. Finally, you can cut off the extra rope 
I recommend leaving four to six inches in case you want to make adjustments later. Burn the end of the rope to keep it from fraying. If you want to shorten the length of the tail, you'll want to wrap it around itself a few times. If you are diving with multiple stage bottles, you can unwrap it and lengthen the tail. Assemble your regulator onto the tank. Now take the three foot section of bungee cord and tie the two ends together to form a loop. Double up the loop and then slide this over top of the tank to hold the regulator hose in place. A second bungee like this is recommended to help hold the hose in place. Like anything in diving, there's lots of different ways to rig your stage bottle, but this is the way I prefer it. It's simple, it's cheap, it's really streamlined, and I bring all my stage bottles this way. If you like the video and you found it useful, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching, guys.